You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. Fidelity's Option Trade Builder tool can help you confidently build an options trade in three simple steps. Just choose a strategy, select a contract, and then review the benefits and risks of the trade. Learn more about Option Trade Builder at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaud from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionPit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That rockin' tune means it's time to rock out with the Option Block, everyone's favorite. I think it's mine. Hopefully, it's your favorite to buy weekly source for all things options related. And however you're joining us, morning, noon, afternoon, evening, however, we hours, hour of the wolf, whatever time you're joining us, uh, we welcome you. If you're joining us live, it's via the old Mixler, in which case, happy afternoon. Uh, hit us up there, questions, comments, insights. That's how you get it in your ear holes the fastest, of course. If you're listening on a podcast, it could be whenever. Whenever you feel like joining us, we welcome you as well and however you listen make sure you hit us up we do like to hear from you guys and joining me from around the globe or in this case the continental u.s <laughs> we are joined let's go first to a quiet some might say provincial hamlet known as saint charles where we are joined by none other than uncle mike tusaw from the appropriately named saint charles wealth management uncle mike welcome back to the show sir what was the licensing fee to use saint charles in the name there was it high we don't talk about stuff like that around saint charles I guess you had to uh, donate a lot of Skippy Zeros to the community every year. Is that part of the deal? We don't talk about that. <laughs> the licensing fees. Very, very, uh, very strict. Strict gag order on that stuff over there in St. I also want to talk about rickets, but we'll get to that in another day. Also joining me from farther away land where they may or may not have conquered rickets. I guess we'll find out. Also known as Maine, where we are joined by the Rock Lobster, Mr. Andrew G. from OptionPit.com. Mr. G., welcome back to the show. How goes the battle against uh, nutritional deficiency diseases, sir? Did you? Uh, uh, first, I'm trying to figure out what's the owl of the wolf? Um, the owl of the wolf. We are fine, though, in Maine. We are fine, though, in Maine. The owl of the wolf would be intriguing. I don't know what that is, but the, the, owl, the, owl, the, owl, the owl of the, of the wolf the would wolf. be like sometime around maybe 2 a.m., midnight to 2 a.m., oh, sometime oh, in that time frame. Oh, for okay. Some sort of scary time. Something when bad things go down. Gotcha. And uh, usually oh, gotcha. when you have your okay. those crises of the souls, usually in that time frame. So all that sort of good stuff. Before we get too deep and dark and philosophical, let's keep on rolling here with the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for the trading block. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's get to it. Let's see what's trading here. And things are trading. Spoiler alert. Things are moving. Things are rocking and rolling yet again. It's another one of those kind of mixed days. If you don't like one index, just pick another. 
chances are it's doing what you want. Here we are, middle of the day. Uh, the markets are kind of a coin pick. Flip them here. The S&P up firm, up six tenths, seven tenths of a percent or so. Uh, the Dow up about a third of a percentage point or so. And then the tech heavy Nasdaq says, no, -uh, none of that upside for me. I'm going downside off nearly half a percent to four tenths of a percent out there. Uh, so all sorts of fun stuff. And all this mixed means VIX Cash taking a little bit of a break, but not a huge one off about a third of a handle here let's see we got as low as a 22 handle uh, so uh, off those lows 22.01 that's a that's an interesting print i'll have to check into that one as uh, we look in right, right now right, right around 2380 or so listeners so we were threatening some more lows uh, at least in the ball space than it seems like uh, calmer saner or in, perhaps in the case of volatility less sane heads uh, prevail. Let's start. Let's start talking vol. Let's start with Mr. Rockloff. So Mr. Rockloff, so what, first off, what's up with this 2201 print? Were we actually hanging out down there? And then B, what's catching your eye today, sir? Um, all I can say is my crystal ball prediction was only three days late. That wasn't bad. Well, if you a, a week in three days, perhaps. Oh, okay. So, so, so we quibble. It was quibble. So quibble more like 10 day. days, but I'll give it to you. Sure. Why not? <laughs> um, you know, um, what I what I'm seeing is like okay, Vix. Um, from this morning, um, volatility in the vol products, meaning people buying calls and puts, steadily climbing the whole day. So, even with kind of we got that future sell off, it just didn't go anywhere. Um, so, really bizarre action. If anybody's scoring at home, Amazon is down 500 bucks from its all time high. I think something like that, almost 500 bucks. Um, that's a pretty good chunk of change. Um, it's 25 percent or something. Uh, all of these EU countries now are starting to talk about internet taxes. You know, somehow just taxing Facebook for being Facebook and um, you know using whatever. So I think that's weighing heavily on. Let's just call it the you know the the top uh, internet stocks. So so that would be hard on Amazon. It would be hard on Google. It'd be hard on Facebook. Um, so there is, um, possibly on Netflix. Um, so I don't know quite how it's going to work out, but you know, the English are floating the trial balloon and I'm sure the rest of the EU is not far behind. So that you're not seeing like the, the, the really good rally. And part of the problem with the sell-off is I haven't seen like one reason. It's just been kind of a bunch of scattered reasons. Um, so and since we really have no reason that I could see that we're selling off, besides just stocks are at an all-time high, the Qs are at an all-time high, all that stuff is at all-time high. Um, actually, what, a month ago? Feels like a long time ago. Uh, I think when Tucson uttered his famous lines. Um, we haven't really had um, – there's been no real let-up. And the biggest thing really is there's no let-up in the curve. So I think uh, a lot of people misunderstand how to interpret the VIX curve, but – um, it's just the way it looks at the way it looks like now we're still backward. It's not really going away. Um, we are between zone three and zone four, which of course, you know, mean, um, it, we're not quite in the highest, but you know, we just keep hanging out here, um, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, with what I would call, uh, extreme backwardation in the vault complex and the VIX complex, uh, at least the way I teach the concept. So it is a, you know, a, there's no all clear sign. There's no anything yet. I mean, I would think the market would start to lift. Some of these prices are starting to look pretty good. I mean, Google below 1,000, uh, NVIDIA 150 puts. We were laughing about that. But, man, I'm going to start looking at the 100 puts. Um, so I think there's some opportunity, and people are freaking out. Um, but there hasn't, you know, every rally is just met with a sell-off. So I would assume starts would start start to go up just on now. Actually, the values aren't too bad. It's like it's so I don't know. I think I think people are freaking out. And ultimately, we still have the election, and I have not seen one shred of evidence to tell me vol's coming down before the election. So I'm sticking with that as a mantra. It's the same way I'll just keep running my vol newsletter the same way. We just peace out our long vol. And kind of hopefully we'll have something set up for after the election of the week after and see, you know, if we don't really get what I would call a, you know, sort of a binary move. Um, 
where people they see what we got. The landscape will be a lot more clear, at least for the next two years. And uh, then we can uh, go about our business. But as of right now, it is still unclear. It is still murky. And um, that's what we got. Not one shred of evidence, says the man, as we're lurking between zone three and zone four, a.k.a. the danger zone there, listeners. So watch out. Things get a little dicey when when Kenny Loggins pops up on the vol scene. You know, things are getting dicey. Mr. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What is cooking uh, over there in the land of St. Charles Wealth? Well, a couple of things. Uh, in looking at this, I agree with Andrew. We probably, probably are going to have more volatility, uh, higher volatility going into the elections. Uh, the only shred of evidence that I could offer, and I want to emphasize that is a shred. We do have a couple of earnings announcements coming up. Um, Apple is going to report in about 20 minutes. We're going to broadcast it live on the show. Uh, and then we have Facebook. So that is something that uh, if we have increases in um those that uh, could drive the market. But once again, I want to emphasize it's only a shred. Um, in terms of what's happening in the market with which itself, uh, we're just kind of, it, it, the S&P is 20 points up right now, but it just feels like it's really hasn't moved since the close of last week, even though it has, if you look at the futures. Uh, we're looking at things to where I think the market is kind of in a wait and see mode, uh, not only for the elections, but also for earnings that we have coming up and as well as uh, the market's always in a wait and see mode to see if there's any uh, surprise macro news or some type of crazy tweet along those lines. Uh, so we do have a lot going on with along those lines. Uh, the thing of note today that's really sticking out to me is the financials. Financials are up 2.3% uh, on the day, uh, definitely outpacing the market itself, even when uh, the markets are going down. Uh, financials, and by financials, I'm referring to XLF. Uh, that's one that uh, is really kind of taking note to me right now uh, in terms of something that is having a pretty strong recovery. In terms of the tech sector, uh, that's about flat on the day. So uh, this rally that we're getting today, if you even want to call it that, uh, it is rather minimal compared to the pullbacks that, or the down days that we've been having. I think a lot of this is being led by the financials. And I think that with where we're headed over the course of the next couple of weeks, uh, if you have some stocks with which you own or if you want to get into some, uh, I like selling puts to get into stocks right now. If that's uh, where you're at, if you've had some cash on the sidelines and you don't really feel comfortable with even the current entry point, then uh, one thing to consider would be to sell a lower strike price short put as a way of getting into the stock. Final thing I'll mention, uh, my beloved shiny things, uh, silver and gold, uh, having a little bit of a pullback today or having a little bit of a down day. Neither of them have really had a ton of movement lately, and I think just at some stage, uh, we will get some pretty serious movement out of the shiny metals. Uh, we'll just have to continue to be patient. And with that, I'll send it back to Mr. Longo. Being patient is, is not quite a thing people usually claim when they're out there slinging earnings, yet we know you guys are out there doing just that. So we're here to enable you in any way that we can. Maybe walk you off the ledge a little bit, too. Well, let's see how some of the big names fared last week. Remember, we have all these reports up on the old website, theoptionsinsider.com. We'll look back now at the earnings move results reports uh, from our friends over there at in the land of Orats. And what do we got here? Let's say Amazon first, a name you guys like to trade. I know it. Spoiler alert. It came up in our poll, maybe. Just maybe. Uh, last week here, and they were pricing in, let's see, going into the earnings, they were pricing in a 100, about 107 point move, 106.70. So they were expecting a little bit over 33%. They ended up getting at 130 point move to the downside. So they outpaced that by, but they actually delivered about 40% vol. So uh, the move was about 22% greater uh, than expected out there. So Amazon uh, knocking it out, at least to the downside in terms of movement related to uh, premium let's look at the googs and let's look at goog l aka alphabet they were pricing in 55 dollars uh, which worked out to about a nearly 27 percent ball and here the actual move was about 35 bucks so uh, a wee bit less there they actually delivered uh, let's see 
about a 37% decreased from uh, from what they priced in uh, to the actual move. So a little bit underwhelming perhaps there, which kind of is in line with what we've been saying for a while now with good old Goog L ever since the alphabet came into being. It hasn't been as as sexy, dare I say, as exciting of a name from an options premium and volatility trading perspective as it used to be. But as the Rock Lobster alluded, you know, flirting with these 1,000 levels. Let's see, where are we right now in the land of alphabet? In the land of alphabet, we're at 1061, almost 1062. So, yeah, flirting with this 1,000 level, maybe on a, on a bold, pure valuation basis, uh, then perhaps it's exciting. Speaking of valuation, I have to touch on this. It's not the sexiest thing, but it kind of just blew my doors off when I heard this. Uh, we got, uh, speaking of sexy tech names, they don't get much sexier than the Beamer. Good old IBM. Uh, one of the pits where I, I cut my teeth back in the day on the SIBO as uh, my first started clerking. Asked me the story about how I moved the dial by accident one time in the after hours. That was fun. But that's a story for another day. Uh, instead, so let's talk about good old Beamer here. Right now, 121.30 here. And uh, they're been making some news today because they acquired Red Hat. Remember Red Hat? You probably don't think about it much unless you're hardcore in the, uh, in the Linux space or the tech cloud services space. But they were kind of known back in the day as kind of like they would come in and set up your Linux distro for you. Not the sexiest thing in the world. Certainly not the highest valuation in the world. Unless you're talking to Beamer because Beamer just acquired them for 34 billion dollars yes 34 with a b uh 190 a share in case you're wondering that's a 63 percent premium to friday's closing price of a little bit shy of 117 so ibm really wants to get into the uh actually they're you know think of them as linux but they're really you know a, a cloud based thing i think they actually mentioned like five times in one sentence and they released the word cloud there. So they're super excited to get into the cloud. Apparently so much so that uh, they're willing to pay a 63% premium for Red Hat. This whole thing is kind of just madness. It's one of the biggest uh, tech deals ever. Certainly one of the biggest acquisition for IBM ever. And it's Red Hat, which is just so funny because everyone, if you remember back in the day when Red Hat first came on the scene, they would kind of come in and they would set up your Linux distro for all you crazies out there who wanted to run Linux. And lo and behold, a few decades or so later, here they are getting acquired for $34 billion with a B. All is not right in the land of uh, IBM, though. Uh, this is a, They're leveraging themselves to do this uh, to the point where uh, Moody's is threatening perhaps a, <laughs> a downgrade as a result of this substantial increase in leverage. And their stock's off, as you might expect as well, only off 2.5%, right around 121 and a half right now. So IBM extending itself dramatically. I don't know, were there other players out there? Why do they feel they needed to just sweep Red Half off their feet like this? They probably could have got it away with a little bit less, but I guess they didn't want a bidding war. They wanted this to be done, said, signed, and delivered. Mr. Rock Lobster, I know you're a diehard fundamentalist. <laughs> what are your thoughts on uh, old Beamer trying to reinvent itself in this era of cloud services and also perhaps more germane to us and our audience, paying 63% for the privilege of doing so, sir. <laughs> uh, that's quite a, uh, and uh, you know what else is, I think that takeover price we were looking at, it wasn't it quite a bit higher than where it is right now? Yeah, it's one. Um, it's 190. I think we'll have to pull up where Red Hat yeah, is right now. Yeah, it's trading 166. Yes, so. so yeah, maybe they're fading. That's not enough of a premium. They're fading this. This is not happening. There, there's definitely a... Um, you know, I, the market is definitely fading it somewhat. So, I, you know, there's probably a trade in there somewhere for it. But, um, I mean, IBM sits on a ton of cash. It's not like they can't afford to buy something. I mean, how much? How many, How much cash does IBM have? I mean, they got a lot of. I mean, they haven't had any growing sales, but they still make money. So let's see. If we have IBM, yeah, they have fifteen dollars. Uh, in cash per share, and they have about a billion shares. So that's $15 billion in cash. So, I mean, they can use some cash, and uh, they didn't use stock for this. That's kind of weird. Why don't they just use their junky stock? Because <laughs> they might as well get something for it. So um, I, it's, it's a weird one. Also, uh, some of the guys in the chat room did see, uh, Keith did see some, Somebody bought some funky calls in there the day before. So, I'm looking at uh, I just week. I just pulled it up here today to say, well, I wonder yep. if there's any interesting paper in Red Hat. It looks like a yeah. bunch of Nov 122s went up uh, for 260. I'm going to go out on a limb and say those are worth a lot more now. <laughs> yeah, 50 bucks a contract more. So, uh, you know, and you know what? Somebody will, and then you go at, on a money show or something, and people will go say, see if you buy these calls. <laughs> so... Um, IBM is just one of those companies that is struggling to find a 
way to grow. They have a lot of customers and they do their thing, but ultimately they're just struggling to find a way to grow. Um, so maybe this does it for them. Uh, maybe they use their balance sheet, uh, which is probably pretty good at this point, um, and and give it a whirl. But they've been, I mean, struggling, struggling, struggling for a long time. I mean, it's a stock trades at a 10 PE. Um, Warren Buffett got rid of it. So, I mean, if he's getting rid of it, nobody, you know, they just don't see any growth for a while. So um, maybe it does it for them, but. It's, it seems it doesn't. This kind of smacks. You remember when Hewlett Packard spent all that money for um, that company that was mostly a fraud? <laughs> I, I know. I know when they bought uh, I, Compaq and it was completely redundant. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and then uh, they also spent a lot of money on some software firm. Remember, like five years ago when HP went to nothing, the stock. So it kind of smells like this a little bit. Um, um, how much good were they buying? I have to imagine it's it's actually probably a pretty decent chunk of goodwill that they're buying with this one. So, um, again, unusual activity wise. Oh, yeah, that's not terrible. Um, not not terrible. Um, they're paying a 50 P.E. though for it at this price at 167. So they'll be paying a nice, you know, 60, 70 P.E. for it by the time. You know who's the saddest about. guy in the market right now? Whoever blasted out 25 of these Ock 120s for a quarter. <laughs> on uh, on Friday, someone just decided they hit the bid. They just, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna collect that quarter for the next. That's a couple of weeks. That's good premium, Mister Rock Lobster. And that you know that's some retail guy, and he just missed out on all of this upside because <laughs> you know he probably well, had stock. Thing, or the worst thing, he probably had stock. Out. He's just harvesting a quarter, and he's got this boring red hat. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> oh, I feel for this guy. I I think that could be a big. You know, or you know, or he read it on some premium selling service. Yeah. You either know. way, either way, if he's closing out, hopefully he didn't do it naked. If he did it naked, then that's just oh, that's horrible. This guy's this guy's in receivership right now. His broker's chasing him. But uh, <laughs> if, let's just hope. Let's just say let's just say he had the shock. In which case, it's just a huge slap in the face. It's not uh, going to put you out of business because you made a little bit of money. But uh, right. yeah, that's that's painful either way. So all these people are always listening. People are harvesting nickels and quarters and dimes here. This is this is the dark side of that as well. Thinking of the dark side, let's get to it. It's time to go dark with the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by theoptionsinsider.com. It's time for the odd block. I wish I could just find that guy. Guy, I'm a nice little grief counselor here. <laughs> His wife's going to divorce him. All sorts of bad stuff going to happen. But to that poor fellow, you feel we feel your pain there, sir. As we move on into the odd block, you know he's not feeling the pain. And also one of the rear names getting a lift. Actually, you know Nasdaq's now green on the day. So hey, go wait a minute, and then uh, wait a few minutes, and the green will come. Uh, Nasdaq uh, unched right now on the day, but Tesla not unched up nearly three percent, or about nine handles. Pushing a whopping 340, so about a, almost a hundred handle swing from where it was a week and change ago. This thing just uh, just moves like crazy cakes. I haven't even had a chance to look to see what the news was driving it today. I will say what the big driver in the options world is. Yeah, it's crazy puts. You guessed it. Uh, the Jan Parr puts in 2019 doing nearly a thousand on the tape so far today. Those are trading right about a buck. Fifty one thousand open there. Uh, Two hundred and seventy of our old friend the fifty puts hitting the tape today. Those are trading about twenty five cents. So those that's that's. Close to a new low, I think, for these bad boys. Uh, let me see. They were like 30-odd cents, I think, when we first started looking at them. But, yeah, twenty. they hit 24 cents today. So, yeah, I think that's a, that's a low, I think, since we've been watching them. I'll have to go check and make sure. But I'm pretty sure when we started looking at these bad boys, oh, way a lot over a year ago, they were still trading, I think, in the 30-odd cent range. So, yeah, hitting a new low on those bad boys, 25 cents or 24. And if that's not enough for you, 608 of the 10 puts for a whopping... Let's see what those went up for. They're trading for two uh, at two cents. Someone paying uh, two cents for a bunch of those bad boys. So there you go. Let's go out to the other Jan, a.k.a. the more rational Jan, a.k.a. Jan 2020. Uh, the par puts 200 on the tape, 200 also of the 40s, not the 50s, only 80 of the 50s. And uh, 1,400, though, of the 10 puts in 2020. 
<laughs> so there's 8,400 open on that strike. So it looks like a big, big chunk of open interest is going to change there. 50 cents those bad boys are trading for. So, yeah, put Palooza is what we got going on out here in good old Tesla. Mr. Rock Lops, you boys uh, pick up any of these bad boys yet in Carmen Line, sir? Uh, we had we have a fly for even money in um, in Tesla, but right now with is there the such earnings, a thing? Is that fly can't be even money anymore? The things moved a hundred handles. Uh, is it still, still even money? <laughs> it hasn't. It has not changed. Uh, it's a par seventy five twenty fly. Oh, um, okay. So, so you're it's just it's crazy just sitting funky. there. I see what you got going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's it's it. I, we thought we'd have a little shot to take it off if went on the downdraft, and it just we never got the vol to collapse. And it's still pretty, you know. It's still a. <laughs> it's there's still some vol there, but I think the short term wise, the all everybody that's short the stock is just you know it's only what thirty bucks from its all time high. Unbelievable to be honest. <laughs> but like we've said on this show many times, it's. That's just a bet I really am not interested in making against that guy, um, just because, you know, he's he's been doing it for a while. So it's it's not a stock I'd want to own, but it's certainly hard to, you know, I just certainly wanted to spend any hard money <laughs> betting against the guy. So that's where we Speaking are. Speaking of hard money, let's see what people are spending their hard money on today. I, I like this kind of uh, live on the fly odd block because we get things as soon as they're hitting the tape. Uh, they're coming across to us. No time for preparation. Preparations for the birds. It's for lazy folks out there. We, we, do, we dive right in. Sight unseen, baby, because that's how we do it here on the old hot block. <laughs> Check your notes, Mr. Rock Lobster, for the most recent edition here. We got new calls hitting the tape from P&G. We're kicking things off with our old friends Procter & Gamble uh, trading today. 88.85, up about a buck or a little over 1%. This is the name that does some paper, as you might imagine, about 19,000 contracts a day. Today doing 72 thousand of that seventy two thousand at least twenty thousand coming in a big print on the april let's go down to april and see what we got here the april 95 calls going up 20 20 000 times for a buck 95 right off the offer there a couple of cents off the offer it's, this is all opening paper only 800 so odd contracts there so it looks like we got ourselves some good old upside love here could be i mean it could always be an override the execution is never Never telling here as well, but if is it over right, they got a good print on this. So well done to their uh, broker. So we're going to go for the bias of this is indeed uh, opening upside buying paper here. Earnings are on the 22nd. So, of course, all the way out to April, you're going to probably have a couple of cycles almost by that point uh, in there. So not a earnings play per se, but open an upside in PNG. You know, PNG not exactly the most. Rock'em sock'em robots of names here. You don't expect a big pop, let alone a uh, seven or so handle pop here, like you would need for these bad boys to move. Let's see what's been going on over the past year. Maybe PNG less stodgy than it used to be. A year ago, it was almost exactly where it is right now. It's right, eighty-seven bucks. So a buck and change lower than where it is right now. It got as high as up to about ninety-two, ninety-three in that range back in December. Then sold off all the way back down to seventy again back in may so it's kind of had a bit and then it's bounced off that low and it's kind of back up in recent earnings they were just a few days ago here on the 19th they look like they were pretty good because the stock's been off to the races since then got as high again as 90 bucks again and kind of bouncing off those lows mr rock lobster bng's had a little bit more movement of late than you might assume for a somewhat relatively stodgy you know old school kind of manufacturing uh you know consumer products type name like this uh, so, yeah, maybe maybe there is a little bit more room to run. Uh, this guy needs it to run up to somewhere in the 95 range and do it, you know, fairly soon for these things to start paying off. If it takes it, if he takes its time, then he needs it to get up to 97, obviously. But uh, still interesting stuff. Mr. Rock Lobster, what say you? Are you feeling open and call by on this? You think maybe it's a uh, really, really fancy overwrite? I think this is a roll up uh, because the April, the there's the April 95s trading, but then the Jan 77 and a halfs are trading, which looks like a closing price to me. Um, just they're trading, yeah, the 77 and a halfs are trading just over parity. So um, it looks like they're closing out um, those very delectable. It, I, this is, you know, what you want to trade a stock like PNG, just trade it twice a year. Wait till everybody's freaking out of the market, <laughs> and then you. Do the two saw, buy an in the money put or close to the money put, 
and then um, you um, and then you, if you take delivery or you buy uh, a near the money or in the money call that has a high delta but not a lot of volatility in it, and then you wait six months or eight months, and if everybody all the smoke clears, you roll it up and make a ton of money. I bet you they bought those calls for I don't know six or seven bucks, so they're probably rolling them, rolling them and taking their dollars. That's that's what I would say. So, and they have another twenty thousand to go. So, um, they're 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 going to hold on to a few and see if maybe they could ride this pony a little higher. You know, that's why I love doing them live because when we do them live, uh, this trade was so fresh it came across. We they didn't even give us the other leg yet. That took that, that went up a few seconds later. <laughs> didn't go up mark this spread either. Because what fun would that be, Mister Rocklap? So that'd be too easy. Uh, they put them up about oh thirty seconds apart, which is just enough for our scanner to only give us one leg, which is fun. That's why, that's why it's, so ch it's too easy to do the other way, Mr. It's too easy to take your time. Uh, but, yes, you're right. There is another leg of the Jan 77 halves, uh, which they are selling out for, looks like, 1240. So probably did well on those. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say they did all right on those. Uh, I'll have to, oh, let's see. Let's, let's do a little bit of extra leg work for our listeners. Mr. Rob. Let's see if we can find when these were open. They've been open for a while, these, these, uh, these Jans. It's been size OI on that strike for at least several months here. At least as far back as my screen goes. So not a not a recent trade by any means. It's no red hat ah, upside calls going up on Friday. So yeah, it looks like that was a bit of a roll, which adds, but still, the net analysis is still sound. They're not closing and going home. They're closing and reestablishing, saying we're gonna play some more. 95 is a new strike. So maybe you maybe you buy what this guy is selling. You say, you know, I think the stock's got room to run, or maybe you like the fact that this guy's buying all his upside. It makes your upside calls you're gonna write here much more juicy. Either way, uh, take that info and run with it as we go on into our next name again more live stuff hitting the tape as we speak Ex <laughs> this is the this is the fun one Ex Ex excelixis <laughs> no idea how you pronounce that ticker symbol excel i'm sure microsoft has everything to say about that uh right now trading 14 dollars off about 30 cents or about two percent this is the name that does three thousand contracts a day not bad paper today doing 21 almost twenty two thousand, about 78 to one calls over puts and we're going out here to feb this time so a little bit longer term call action that's today's narrative and in this case it's the feb 16s lighting it up to the tune of 10,000 times. Let's see. Looks like we're pretty much... <laughs> this market, Mr. Rock Lobster, is ridiculous. When these went up, they were 60 cents at a buck 85. <laughs> so people who all say, is there is there liquidity outside of front month at the money? Not so much in Exelixis. <laughs> That's a hard one. I don't even know how to pronounce that. So this, this is the coin flip. What the hell this one was, Mr. Rock Lobster? It went up for a buck 35 they almost literally split the uprights. Went a little bit longer to the uh, to the upside there. Uh, for 10,000 times, uh, it is obviously biased a wee bit toward the ask. So we might be able to intuit from that 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 is uh, a buy. But it has a bit of a, let's see, opening paper here on the 16 strike. I don't know. I might have to come out on a limb and say this could be an overwrite. It is opening. No OI to speak of because this thing doesn't do a lot of paper. Let's look at the chart. Maybe the chart will provide more insight here. A year ago, they had earnings exactly a year ago, and they were trading 25 and a half, 27 and a half actually got up to. So, yeah, they were looking a lot higher <laughs> a wee bit a while ago. They got up to 32 back in Jan, and then they kind of have been on this long, slow death knell ever since down to where they are now, 14 bucks. So I guess looking at that, Mr. Rock Lobster, this could be some open and upside call of the 16 strike doesn't seem that crazy now after having looked at that. Uh, they were roughly 2x that not too long ago. Uh, so, Mr. Rock Lobster, what are you feeling on this crazy redonkulous spread here? You think, you think they are indeed lifting offers? Or not lifting offers, but buying these things? Or you think they're, they got a good overwrite sale here? I, yeah. Do you really think they're selling those? I'm, I'm, not really. I'm, but I, I'm of the I'm mind that they're. Uh, I'm trying to gin you know, up some, some conversation here. What are they? Let's yeah, see. What, let's see what they do. That might help us here. They. Oh yes, they're a biopharmaceutical company. That says it all. Yeah, people don't yeah. write calls in those. If they do, they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it's it's one of those. You know, I, I think there's somebody's just buying a cheap shot in uh, relatively cheap for that stock and. Um, and uh, wait until February. Um, I, you know, I think long, 
you know, to me, like you're either buying really short term calls and you're getting out of them quick, or you're buying long term calls, so um, you you have some room to make some money. So it kind of looks like they're doing the latter there, and they're trying to get their Exelixis on. Exelixis, what a what a name! Yeah, the marketing guys need to uh, they need to do some work there on on a rebrand. Something that's at least pronounceable would be would be appreciative. Uh, let's go from a crazy brand, uh, a crazy name that's hard to pronounce, to an easy one you may have heard of, called Ford. I know Uncle Mike used to play once or twice in Ford. Let's see if uh, if uh, if uh, let's I, if I type the right. That's an easy ticker to type in. <laughs> I actually typed in Ford, which is something else entirely. No, no, of course the ticker is F. Uh, trading today nine dollars and thirty six cents. Ford's been on a bit of a uh, rampage of late, kind of vacillating all over the place. You know they've been kind of hit by these tariffs as a result. They got down to eight seventeen back in the big sell off madness. So that's a big sell off for Ford. They're trading north of. They were trading close to over 10 bucks not too long ago. So, yeah, that's a big sell-off in Ford. Then they've kind of bounced back. Now they're at $9.37 here on today's moving. And that's all driving a lot of paper out here in Ford land. Ford's averaging 66, 66 easy for me to say, 1,000 contracts a day. Today doing 186,000, so lighting it up out there in Ford land. Lots of strikes lighting it up. A couple of trades hit our scanners uh, coming in today. They went in, they went in a couple hours Apart, but the two big trades out here uh, were the no nine and a half calls, a big print uh, crushing below the bid actually over there on our friends the Gemini. The bid was twenty seven cents. He's went for twenty six cents, so maybe a little bit out of sequence there. About forty one hundred times for twenty six cents, and then later on, oh, actually two hours before this was a big print of the nine and a half puts going up for. So that could be doing. Let's see, just a. Uh, these are regular no, so it could be a reversal conversion. Let's see what's going on out here. Uh, nine and a half puts going up for 22 cents. Those are above the offer. So whenever you see that kind of paper on the same strike, there is, but it's actually outweighed here. There's uh, the nine and a half calls are doing a total of six, almost 7,000 today and uh, 4,600 the nine calls. Things are just trading out here in Ford land across the board. So these trades are a couple hours apart, so it's hard to really put them together and say, oh, they're linked, even though they are indeed the, uh, the same strike here i just wanted a chance to talk about Ford. we haven't talked about ford in a while here on the old show um chinese <laughs> mr uncle mike are you still slinging ford out there in the strategic night sir is that part of the of the holdings not in the strategic night i mean i like ford personally i think it's a it's a good company. I, I think ultimately Ford is kind of like an old man stock. In other words, uh, just from years of uh, traveling the country and just going to presentations and things like that, uh, a lot of older gentlemen really like Ford. And it's a familiar company. And uh, it's uh, not it's not like it's a high flyer or very high price like uh, Google. I mean, by price, meaning the amount of dollars per share, not um, whether it's high or low in relation to the market. But it's a good stock to where it's a good, solid company. Uh, it's something that uh, most older Americans feel com comfortable with. And you know, my wife always talks to me about how I'll need a good retirement job someday. And I think uh, somehow it's going to be owning Ford and writing covered calls against it. Yeah, that seems like the use case for Ford. Ford's a great covered call or just a wheel name, you know. Uh, you're not going to yeah. get, get a ton for it, but it's got a fairly reliable range, except for this past week, obviously. This is when maybe some of the wheelers get a little bit, uh, get, get a little bit hit. <laughs> but uh, you got to get a ton for it, but if it's reliable, you're going to get your income over and over again. If you get hit, you just write it out again on the call side. It's not going to be too big of a hit usually. Uh, so it's not a bad one. That's why I think of you and I think of Ford. I think it's just a reliable wheel name, uh, which I think you guys would like. Mr. Rocklops, so you guys talk any Ford over there in the... Uh, and the pitch has not the sexiest of names, but it's it's a bit of an old kind of faithful out there. I mean, you you look at it, and they've done a pretty good job of managing that company. To be honest, remember like the financial crisis, all the automotive. I thought Ford was the only one that didn't take any money. Didn't we all buy a hundred thousand shares for a buck back in the day? I think we all did, right? Yeah, I think so. But I mean, they're they're still poking along, selling call cars. Uh, you know, they have a they pay a pretty high dividend so again this is like one of those little fundamental companies but i think there's some news about the chinese are backing off on some some uh tariffs or something on imported cars some something along those lines um i think that was and i think that's part of the reason why the market rallied so hard this morning and then everybody just you know got sad and and blue again um so because the brits decided to raise taxes on you know google and facebook 
So everybody freaked out and sold everything off. But, um, you know, this is one of those, and I think these are one of kind of the anti-Tesla play where, you know, maybe a technology company joins with somebody like Ford who already has the wherewithal to, you know, make the cars. Although, you know, you can argue that the, the Tesla technology for building a car is far above everybody else's, but just as far because it's so, um, uh, it's such a streamlined production process for them. But um, it, it is a possibility on that kind of, you know, autonomous cars on all the time business that people seem to be, you know, where they put their propeller hat, their propeller hat on and think about the future that you have these cars that just run on electricity that don't hurt the environment and that they're all run by, you know, uh, automatic, uh, um, you know, like self-driving and stuff, kind of like total recall and everything's cool. And then Ford will be one of the people that make those cars. Um, so that is a, I would call the antithesis <laughs> for <laughs> yes. that, yes. for Tesla. Um, but, or in the meantime, you just, you know, you sell the nine puts and, you know, probably make your 10 or 15% a year and at least depend on the fact that that dividend will pay you something. I mean, it's 65 cents is not nothing on a $9 stock. So just tell um, that to the guy who sold the calls for 22 cents in or 25 cents in Red Hat. You know, he's, uh, he's regretting <laughs> his, by the way, if you ever, I've never done this before. I didn't know his ticker existed. The ticker for Ford F O R D is uh, is uh, trading is a stock is trading for a buck fifty. They make case soft sided carrying cases for iPhones and whatnot. In case you're wondering, uh, case th so the other Ford out there actually is Forward Industries. I learned something today. There's a new there's a new Ford out there, and it's not Ford. All right, let's keep rolling <laughs> into uh, into a little bit of old fun. It's time for Uncle Mike to take the reins, talk wheels and Ford. Who knows? Let's get to it. It's time for the strategy block. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, everybody. That music means it's time for Uncle Mike to hold court. Uncle Mike, I set you up perfectly. I gave you the sexiest of all lead-ins, sexiest of all topics. Ford Wheel, sir, go. Oh, man. I don't know how it can get much better than that. Uh, but... What I want to go through today is a strategy that I've been kind of looking at uh, as a way of buying the dip. Now, let's say that uh, you're in a position to where you took money off the table uh, when you were taking profits back when SPY was in the low 290s. Uh, just because remember, we should be long term bullish, short term cautious, or at least that's how I think the whole world should think nonetheless. Uh, but short term cautious is a very big part of it. And the reason for that is when you have a, a pretty significant pullback like we've had these last couple of weeks. So with that being said, let's say that you're in that position and you want to get into this market somehow. Uh, well, how on earth can you possibly do that um, and uh, not pay too darn much for option premium? Well, there's a couple of choices with which you have. Uh, you can perhaps maybe sell a put spread. Uh, because you want to get some premium. After all, the uh, mar the you can sell puts further out of the money right now, and by doing that, uh, you get maybe a little bit more cushion, or you can be a little bit closer to being at the money if you'd like, uh, and get more premium for it. That's one way of doing it, and I have done that a little, little bit these last couple of weeks. I've taken a few lumps, but uh, the main thing is, is that I didn't get my face ripped in. But what's another way with which you can actually be a part of the upside of the marketplace and still have some type of managed risk in place? Well, this is one of the few times in the market where I actually employ uh, something that I really don't do too much of. I do at times, but this is uh, one of the times with which I've done it, and that would be the good old-fashioned butterfly. So on October 19th, uh, we were at a point in this market uh, to where we actually uh, uh, were, we, we were dipping, so to speak. But to give you an idea of it, on October 19th, my apologies, just clicking through a couple of charts here. October 19th, uh, the S&P was in the mid to high, to, I'm sorry, SPY was in the mid to high 270s. And with that, it appeared that perhaps maybe we have uh, weathered the storm, so to speak, and that uh, maybe the pullback has uh, um, taken its shape and that maybe it's time to start getting back in. Well, on that, 
one thing that I like to do in situations like that, if possible, would be to just simply buy an out-of-the-money call and just sit on it. If the market goes higher, great. Market goes lower, well, I didn't pay that much for it anyway. Well, that's great. Well, there was one problem with that on October 19th is that uh, volatility was acting in such a way to where I really couldn't do such a thing like that. So what could I do? Well, I bought a butterfly out of the money on SPY. Uh, and so how on earth do you manage these things? What's the purpose of it? How can this work? Well, one thing I had talked about um, a few months ago, back when we had the very low VIX, was how I was actually, how out of the money calls were actually working. Well, it's not going to work in that same fashion in a market like we have right now because the out of the money calls cost too much money. So by buying a butterfly, let's take an, let's examine how this can work. The market's going to go up, the market's going to go down, the market's going to stay the same. Should the market stay the same and we take absolutely no action, then the loss can still be fairly minimal because of the fact that the price you pay for an out-of-the-money butterfly will be similar to what we were paying for those out-of-the-money calls a few months ago, back when we had the, the glory days of the, the 10 VIX. So with the market staying the same, your risk is still very similar with this. Now, with that being said, what if the market goes lower? Same concept. Let's say you do nothing. You lose 100% on the trade. Well, 100% of a little bit is still a little bit. So the point is, is that you take a smaller amount of your trading capital, and that's the way with which you can manage risk on it. Now, with that being said, but Uncle Mike, the market has gone down these last couple of weeks. What things have you been doing to work this butterfly? Well, what I have been able to do is step one, as the market has gone down, I've gotten out of the short spread of the butterfly. I used to call a bullish call butterfly. I, I bought to close the half of the body and the upper wing. And so then I was just in a simple call spread. Market went down a little bit more. I bought to close the other call option on it. Now, with that being said, yes, vol goes up, and it's not my preferred medium to be buying calls when vol is going higher. However, the market had gone down at such a rapid rate that Delta, uh, well, it, it outpaced Vega, which it usually does in markets like this, uh, or any market for that matter, if, if you're being directional. And now I'm back to a similar old familiar spot to where I'm long a long call um, out of the money and waiting to see if this market comes back. Should the market go lower? Well, I don't have that much on the table. Market goes higher. It's going to be even better because now I don't have the butterfly hindering me. So with that being said, let me give you some uh, an idea on this. I do have a higher cost basis than I would have had I just sat on the butterfly. However, at least at some point today, we were really close to being break even as if I would have just sat on the butterfly the whole time. Uh, we might get back to that point today. Uh, but the beauty of it is, is that the market has gone down. Even if, even if we get to the highs of today again, the market will have gone down from where it was when I originally got into this trade. And we're still at close to break even on the overall trade because of the profits I was able to take on the short options. And so that's kind of the fun part about doing a trade like this, because now I'm in a position to where if the market goes higher, perhaps I could sell some premium again, market goes lower, maybe I could sell a put spread, uh, finance it, whatever the case may be. Now, here's the question that I didn't answer yet. What if we buy the butterfly and the market goes higher right away? Well, if should that be the case, one thing to keep in mind is that if we do have an inverse volatility and market relationship, vol is going to come down a little bit. So yes, you will lose money on those out-of-the-money calls with which we sold. However, you have vol working in your favor most likely because vol had such a high spike and such a large movement. So with that being said, if I do think that it's still not too late to do such a thing. If you are looking to get into this market and be bullish in some way, shape, or form, but you're really scared out of your mind, quite frankly, maybe take a small amount of capital and consider taking a look at buying an out-of-the-money long butterfly. Once again, it's not for everybody, uh, but it is something with which to take a look at. And that is the last strategy block for October. That's the thing I'm saying for the year. I was like, oh, what happened? Where you go? <laughs> All right, there you go.
last strategy block for October. Crazy to think we're heading into November. Also equally crazy to think we're heading into Around the Block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, we still are in the teeth of it. Earnings season, earnings driving a lot of what's going on in the macro front, but not all, obviously, as other trends and winds are blowing uh, to fight against the, mac the micro trend that's going on out there. Uh, let's see, today after the bell, we have uh, Mondelez and everyone's favorite, Chegg. <laughs> and then uh, I think we have Kent Tontinental as well. Tomorrow we have eBay after the bell, as well as a name you may have heard of called Facebook. We've got GE before the bell, Sony and BP and Pfizer and Under Armour there as well. Wednesday after the bell, we've got a good old Fitbit, GM, GM's before the bell actually, excuse me, on Wednesday. So a lot of names coming off there. Thursday, we've got another name, something I can't tell. They don't really have a name. It's just a, a fruit logo. So we'll just call them the fruit company uh, popping off after the bell on Thursday. Got GoPro as well. Another one a lot of you guys were interested in. And they've kind of uh, gone the way of the dodo. Let's see where our old friends GoPro are right now. Six bucks. <laughs> Six bucks and change. Oh, how uh, the seemingly once mighty were falling. I was always kind of confused about this sector. It seemed like a very niche thing, even when it launched and its immediate popularity really kind of befuddled me because we all have smartphones. Granted, I get it's a different segment. You don't want to break your smartphone when you're doing whatever your skateboarding videos, but still, it seemed very niche and it seemed like the market is waking up to that. But that's, uh, that said, though, they are off their lows. Their lows were about four bucks and change. Oh, back in April this year, 442 was like the low out there. So they are off that trading 614 right now. Up about half a percent. So if you are indeed so inclined, they do do some options. 15,000, almost 16,000 a day out there, even though the stock itself, some might say, is pushing option territory. But if you are so inclined, you got GoPro on Thursday. And then, of course, you got uh, some big names on Friday as well. Before the bell, Exxon, Chevron, a lot of energy names, Duke, Seagate in that realm. And a little name you may be familiar with called SIBO. You port in their numbers. Let's see. They're having a lot of back and forth now with the SEC over market data. So who knows what the guidance is going to look like for this year. But a lot of big names popping off still this week, if you are indeed so inclined. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, are you so inclined to watch earnings? If so, what? And what else are you watching? Uh, Vix dancing with that danger zone? <laughs> Vix dancing with the danger zone. You know what? I like to see us not pop into zone... Um into zone four anymore. If nobody I mean, if wants we want that. the rally to sustain, Kenny Loggins um, is the only guy who wants that. I, I know. I know. I got to, I got to, I got to name each zone. Now you've got me on the war path for doing that. Um, so, and I think don't we have the fruit company coming up. I know. I thought Mike said it, on, the on uh, earnings already came out. Yeah. Well, he likes to, he <laughs> likes to lie about that stuff, but I told the truth for a change. It's on Thursday after the bell. Okay. All right. So turning um, over a new leaf, no more Apple lying, I, at least for this week. I, and I think that's going to be a big earnings just for technology because there's there are times every once in a while like everybody's looking for Apple to have good earnings because, um, you know, all the other tech stocks earnings weren't bad. Um, it's just that everybody's in the I want to sell a mode because we, you know, we don't have any really good reasons to go higher. Um, so the Qs were 30 points higher not very long ago. So um, and that's where we are. Um, so I think at the Apple could get us out of the doldrums this week um, and see if we could hold a green day today. That would be nice. Not the band, but the uh, but a green day and the uh, the Qs, the SPY and um, the IWM and the Russell. So I'm, I'm looking at that and just seeing it also evolve and evolve of all can go down. It was up pretty much all day. So I'm wondering if it's going to hold up. If you remember, we were in a similar position last cycle where the market was kind of in the doldrums looking bad, and then everyone was saying, Apple, come save us. And they did. They turned it all around last cycle. So who knows? We could find ourselves in a similar scenario on Thursday. Apple, save the day. And they'll say, hey, 80 bazillion iPhones were purchased for 1000 bucks a pop, and everyone's happy. Or maybe not, in which case the market will just annihilate itself. So either way, it should be interesting to watch. Mr. Uncle Mike, I'm sure you're watching Apple, but we'll talk about that on Thursday. show. What else is catching your eye, sir? Well, I, I think that, of course, earnings, that's the big thing right now. I think everyone's watching. This is a big week of earnings. And uh, for the most part, I think a lot this will help the market show its hand for what's going to happen the rest of the year. 
October a lot of times does have a lot of volatility in it. Uh, this month was definitely, this October was definitely no exception. So I think if we do have some pleasant news with earnings this week, it could bode well for the month of November. So uh, in terms of a green day, uh, when I come around, uh, we won't deal with any of this dookie. Look at you making your mid to late 90s musical references, sir. Well done. All right. That music means we are also done here on the old option block. Talked a bunch of fun stuff. Talk some earnings, talk some Tesla, talk some Ford puts and calls, talk all kinds of weird stuff on the show today. Talk IBM just just paying through the nose for a former Linux distro installer. We'll see how that goes. Things have changed a little bit, obviously, at Red Hat these days. Not quite what they used to be in terms of they're much bigger. Uh, clearly, they're $34, $34 billion big now. Because at the end of the day, what are you worth? You're worth what someone will pay for you. And IBM clearly said... Paying $34 billion. We'll see how that works out. They say it's going to be a game changer for them. For their sake, I hope so, because at this price, kind of needs to be. Uh, but let's go back around the horn here. Let's start with Uncle Mike Surf. I, I'm loving all this St. Charles love you're throwing my way, and I want to call you up, and I want to say, what can I do to get some St. Charles love for my own portfolio, sir? Where should I go? What should I do? By all means, I will come give you some love in your portfolio. Call me at 312-212-3531. Or visit my website at www.stcharleswealth.com and learn a little bit more about what we do here in lovely, sunny, scenic St. Charles. That might be some new good branding for you. Let Uncle Mike give you some love. You think uh, compliance will sign off on it? No. <laughs> <laughs> might, might get you some interesting new clientele. Perhaps not what you're going for, but you, hey, you, you never know. Let Uncle Mike give you some love. stcharleswealth.com to learn more. Click on the, on the fox for fun Easter eggs. All right. Mr. Mr. Rock Lobster, what kind of Easter eggs uh, you got going over there in the land of the pit? Wow, Easter eggs! Isn't that isn't it early for Easter eggs? Your I think your crystal ball is broken. I mean the hidden fun variety, uh, Easter egg item. You know, <laughs> you're not hip with the lingo, sir. Uh, we have a weekly webinar uh, for Saturday on uh, on short term weeklies and daily options, understanding how those work, so you can actually make money using them. Um, you know, if you heard that on Option Insider and you send me a note, Andrew at OptionPit.com, we'll even throw in a three-month of Option Pit Live if you buy it. If, you, if you're if you listening to this show and you send me a note, um, yeah, you can actually get something for nothing. So go to our website, to the events, and sign up. Hit the man a note. You get something for nothing. They said there's no free lunch, but there are, is some free content over there in the land of the pit. Check it out for yourself, OptionPit.com. To learn more, tell them we sent you. There's no fox to click on. Maybe you can click on a big picture of Andrew there. Maybe you get some fun Easter eggs that way. Go over there. Find out. Let me know. Do some clicking. See what you find. And on behalf of the Rock Lobster and Uncle Mike, who just wants your love, and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for listening live or sending in questions. Didn't get any questions today. I apologize. We'll get to the bunch on Thursday. Don't worry. And we'll see you next time for more of the Option Block. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com.